Hello and welcome everyone to the Balstar NFT gaming channel. Today we are looking at the top 10 hottest NFT crypto play to earn games heading into October. We're going to be looking at 10 of the hottest NFT gaming trends, including the market, users, and news. Please remember none of this is financial advice, but hopefully observations that help you stay up to the latest in NFT gaming. So if that interests you, stay tuned and let's jump into it. Starting at number 10, let's talk about some of the biggest token gainers in the month of September heading into October. Now, of course, in crypto, sometimes tokens just go up and down and things can seem random. But usually if a token of a certain game is moving, usually the community or investors are responding to something. One of the biggest gainers on the list was Guild of Guardians, who excitedly announced that they are partnering with eight massive esport brands to put IP into their game, including teams like Navi, Cloud9, T1, Team Liquid, and more. They also announced that they added 50,000 more players to their waitlist, even in this bear market and downtime for play to earn games, as well as putting out their roadmap version two. Now, I didn't see any dates on the roadmap that they released for version two, but perhaps just the announcement, the things that are ahead are exciting the community. Since the beginning of September to the time of this video, the Gilded Guardians token has increased by about 75%. If you're not familiar with Gilded Guardians, you can jump over the research report our alpha team put out or the video review that I did. Next up, one of the biggest gainers was the game Rebel Bots. We did a research report on Rebel Bots months ago, but since then they haven't really made a big splash until recently. Recently, they launched on the Haku NFT gaming market, they've been trending on the Polygon blockchain, and they've been heavily doing campaigns and awarding players with beta passes for their upcoming launch. People seem to be responding to what they're doing as from the lows of last month to the highs of this month has been about a 100% increase in their token price. And lastly, one of the biggest gainers of last month was My Crypto Heroes, whose token MCHC has jumped up from 3 cents to a 10x of around 30 cents. Now, full disclosure, I personally don't know much about My Crypto Heroes, and Balthazar hasn't done any research on this game yet, but they claim to be an RPG game built on Ethereum, and at one point in 2019 had the most users on DAP Radar, but now when I looked it up, are fallen all the way to 47th. So who knows for sure, but from the outside looking in into this situation, it looks like it's less about the gameplay or announcements there, and more so announcements about giveaways, liquidity pools, and partnering up with a gaming specific blockchain, Oasis. At number nine is gonna be Game Meta, which really blew up on DAP Radar, which is reporting them as the number one game right now with the most users leapfrogging last month, games like Splinterlands, Alien Worlds, and Axie Infinity. Now there is some debate around DAP Radar and the reporting of their users and how accurate it is. Also, how do you account for bots versus real humans? But I still like to look at it as far as just a trend. Game Meta has launched a few games that are now on the Google Play Store if you have access to that. And with their alpha has come different prize pools for players. From what I've seen, the prize pools are usually around a couple thousand dollars in USDT. Now I don't have access to a phone with the Google Play Store, but just looking through the games online, a lot of them reminded me of when I watch YouTube and they <laughs> advertise a mobile game that doesn't look incredible, but just kind of very arcadey and you know cartoonish. And then when I went into my Apple Store just to see if the game was released in, as a different version, a lot of these games have games that are pretty similar out there already. There's nothing that I saw that was really unique. To me, this hottest trend is less exciting as a gamer. These games don't really appeal to me as I look at them. But what I think this trend actually shows is that there is still a hunger for play to earn games, and especially those that are on mobile devices. Now, perhaps if Game Meta can do things like update their white paper and make it a little bit more robust and add some better games that are a little bit more interesting, they could be really come a force in the Web3 gaming space and onboard a lot of Web2 gamers. Or maybe I'm wrong and people are simply looking for casual mobile games and a little way to earn on the side. At number eight of the hottest trends is Duroc, who was trending on playtoearn.net for most of the month of September. Now, one of the reasons it's probably trending is because their alpha testnet is now out and usually when a new game releases some kind of gameplay mechanic, usually it trends for quite some time. And so anyone can go out and try this on their desktop or even on their mobile devices. Now, if like me, you had never heard of Duroc, essentially it's a game where you will get to breed and raise your dogs and put them into races. Now, looking at the gameplay, you probably will recognize that it looks pretty similar to something like Pegaxi or Zed Run, except for with dogs instead of horses. 
Now they do have their own metaverse attached, which they've shown in a video, but you can see here, and at least in its alpha state, the graphics and quality are probably not high enough really to appeal to a lot of gamers. Now it's great that the team has got their NFT game trending, but it begs the question, how many possible games do we need like this that look similar to Zedron, Payaxi, and more? I guess time will tell. At number seven of the hottest heading into October, one of the ones that I'm really excited about is that Domain Online has now opened up their applications to get into their alpha gameplay. Now, if you haven't heard about Domain Online, you of course can go read our research report and see how it reviewed and scored. But essentially Domain Online is an MMO that's really gonna appeal to that hardcore player because of things like having no level or skill cap. Domain Online has consistently been putting out updates and by the time of this video, you can probably go watch their September development update, but their August one showed a lot of improved graphics as well as how they are recording the sound and voices of this game to give a full immersion experience. If their alpha launch that's coming up soon goes well, they could be amongst some of the first MMOs to make a big splash in Web3 gaming. At number six is our own Balthazar tweet comparing to see which are some of the biggest gaming and most hyped communities for the largest NFT games. Now, of course, this poll only included our four highest ranked games that we've reviewed so far, so it doesn't include other games like Blinko's, Sandbox, and other large communities. However, I did think it was really interesting with over a thousand votes that Alluvium came in first, Dogami came in second, Parallel in third, and lastly, Shrapnel in fourth. Now it is a big win for Alluvium to show that they have had at least more hype from our Twitter poll than some of these other communities, but what I thought was actually really interesting was Shrapnel, that even though they got fourth place, was only a few percent points behind Parallel, even though they have about a fifth of the size of Twitter followers, and less than a tenth of the size of the followers Alluvium has. So getting 18% of the vote while Alluvium got 35% is still pretty good for Shrapnel. At number five was Shatterpoint having one of the hottest trends on playtoearn.net. If you haven't heard about Shatterpoint yet, it is a free to play, play to own action RPG for mobile devices. Back in July, they released a pre-alpha gameplay, which if you can take a look at it here, looks like a lot of things that you would expect in an ARPG, including things like choosing your hero, finding different loot, having different abilities, and of course, things like boss fights. According to the roadmap on their website, they should have a PVE and a PVP version of their game here in quarter four of this year. It seems like their community is growing and engaging, and it's also hard not to trend when you do something crazy like offer a $10,000 giveaway prize pool. With a lot of NFT games still having expensive NFTs to actually start playing the game, I think people also are just excited because it's nice to hear that there's going to be more free to play games. At number four is three different games trending the most on playtoearn.net's new games. Now disclaimer, it doesn't really take much to trend on playtoearn.net's new games because you're not competing with a lot of other games because you only are allowed to be in that category for a certain amount of time. However, a lot of NFT gamers like to find new games and get in on the ground floor rather than finding a game that already has a large community. The first one up is Cyber Titans, which is an auto chess battler that might remind you of something of Dota Auto Chess or Team Fight Tactics, where you have eight players playing in this auto battler. They have gameplay testers already trying out this game throughout September and have announced a quarter one launch of 2023 on Elixir. Next up is Gunfire Polygon, which claims to be the number one NFT game on Avalanche that is now ported over to the Polygon blockchain. It's a free mobile game that can be played on Android or iPhones right now, and you can start earning. If an auto shooting NFT game for mobile devices sounds interesting to you, you can download the game and try it yourself. And finally trending on new games for playtoearn.net was the game Meat. Or should I say Meat? This is another mobile game that can now, as far as an alpha, be played on the Apple or the Google Play Store, and a beta is coming out here on October 10th. Now their 2000 NFTs have already sold out, but perhaps they are going to bring a marketplace out where you can buy them on the secondary market. But if you look at the game, it'll probably remind you of something of another Farmville style game or for those crypto gamers, Townstar or Sunflower Farmer. Now the potential advantage for Meat is that they have a dedicated mobile app where a lot of the other games don't. At number three is a couple news pieces, which I think points to Web3 Gaming building some bridges with Web2 gamers. The first one up is GameStop partnering up with Gods Unchained. If you missed the news, GameStop Power Up Pros will receive a unique code that can be redeemed for Gods Unchained expansion packs. 
Each pack will consist of a set of collectible NFG trading cards that pros can use to build strategic decks as they hone their skills in competitive multiplayer battles. Now, of course, GameStop was already in the Web3 space with their NFT marketplace, but offering something to their power up pros is potentially a bridge where players now from the Web2 gaming space might come upon the Gods Unchained, which will get them into NFTs and Web3 gaming. And secondly, what we've already talked about was Guild of Guardians partnering up with massive esport brands to bring IP into their game. We've all heard that there's a large portion of Web2 gamers that are really against play to earn and NFTs currently, but it seems more and more that esports players, brands, coaches, teams are getting into the Web3 space. We've already seen a lot of the biggest esport teams and leagues being sponsored by different crypto organizations. This is just another step in the right direction where now these esport teams are actually being brought into a NFT game. If the biggest esport brands are now talking about Web3 games and getting into Web3 games with their IP, this could be another great bridge for Web2 gamers to realize that not all NFT gaming is a bad thing. At number two of the hottest games going into October is the trending game on Fractal, EV.io. If you haven't played it yet, they claim to be the halo of Web3, offering PvP, PvE, 10 plus maps, private parties, and a custom Fractal map to battle on and earn WL tokens. EV.io is a browser-based game, which usually means that a lot more players are able to access the game because it's browser-based, but usually the quality is less than what can be achieved through a game that is downloadable. In my opinion, after doing some playtesting of this game, I feel like they have a long ways to go if they really want to be the Halo of Web3. Now, there are some exciting things going on with this game, including tournaments, even a live hosted one by W3E going on in Turkey November 17th. Now, in my opinion, this trend is more of a result of a lack of competition in Web3 shooters right now and less about EVE.io being a great game that will be able to compete with Web2 games and attract players that might be interested in something like Halo. Of course, the team can continue to work on the game and improve things over time, but that's how I see it, and at least in its current state. And at number one for the hottest game was Arch World, which was trending as the most visited game in September and into October on PlayToEarn.net. Arch World is an MMO that is coming from an older game, Arch Age, that was released back in 2013. Now, this trend might be a little bit skewed as Arch World has been paying for advertisements on PlayToEarn.net, so that is probably one of the reasons why it's the most visited game. However, I thought it was interesting that it's also been covered by one of the, of the biggest NFT YouTubers out there, with Kagi Jan heavily covering it with multiple videos. Also, to give it more credit, Arch World is one of the few MMOs with NFTs that is actually playable today. Now, this game is free to start and you can play now, but just a heads up, if you're looking to this game to earn, then you're going to need to own or rent a piece of land, which owning a piece of land right now is going to at minimum cost you upwards of $400 worth of crypto. As I've read up on it, a lot of people have complained that Arch Age was already a dying game as they made mistakes in development and things that the community didn't really like. And there's now accusations of, hey, they're just bringing back this game so they can re rehype or resurrect a dead game or potentially even worse, go for a cash grab. A lot of those comments and articles are potentially Web2 gamers who already are upset at NFT gaming and play to earn already. But I think for Archworld, if they are going to achieve success, to me, that means they need to reach out beyond just play to earn gamers and create their MMO in a way where people want to play it regardless of earnings at the time. As a playable NFT MMO, Archworld is definitely at the top because there's not a whole lot of competition. So we'll see as time goes by if they can remain to hold on some of those top spots or if other upcoming MMOs such as Domi Online that we mentioned earlier will be able to overtake the hype. Now these didn't make the top 10, but real quick, a couple bonus picks that I'd like to mention before we end the video today. Phantom Galaxies released their episode four and they have an early access launch coming soon here in this next quarter. Secondly, Parallel dropped their card stats and abilities, which have led to a lot of people already theory crafting and trying to come up with a meta for Parallel. Lastly, Dexy Hunter, which we covered in an interview previously, has released their alpha that people can now go out into the real world through AR and collect crypto and NFTs. That's gonna be it for the hottest trends of NFT games going into October. The order and the ranking didn't really matter too much. So I wanna know from your point of view, which of these 10 mattered the most to you between the news, market moves, and NFT gaming trends. So drop some comments below and I'll see you in one of these other videos around me. Thank you, gracias and salamat for tuning in. 
Take care.